Hello, welcome to Analog Output. Got a new module here. This is an ADSR envelope generator. This is a module that creates a, an output voltage that goes from zero to some maximum on a time scale that's governed by this attack knob. Then the voltage comes down to some intermediate value with a time scale governed by the decay knob. The level of the intermediate value is governed by the sustain knob, and then the release knob governs when the uh, voltage back drops back down to zero, how fast that happens. And you trigger this with a gate that turns it on, and when the gate turns off, it turns it off. And this gives you an envelope for controlling uh, VCA output uh, amplitudes or whatever else you want to do with it. And ADSR envelope generators have been around ever since the uh, first Moog modular synthesizers. Long time now. This particular design is one that I came up with based upon a design from the Casatronics blog that was published in 2015. The Casatronics version is based on a design from the USynth website published in 2009. The USynth design is based on an idea by a guy named Jonathan Jackie, published in 1980. So this is a product of more than 40 years of development and research and perfection or something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, you would think that by the time the USynth design was put together, we'd have everything figured out, but it, the USynth design does have uh, a deficiency which is actually common among a lot of envelope generators and which is corrected uh, by the Casatronics design. The idea there being that what you have is a capacitor and the, you're charging and discharging this capacitor and that is what creates the output voltage for this thing. And when you discharge the capacitor, you're discharging it through a variable resistor and a diode. The variable resistor controls the uh, discharge rate and hence how long it takes to drop to, to zero. And the diode is used to control the fact that you're discharging uh, but not charging through this, uh, through this path. It prevents the uh, current from flowing the way you don't want it to flow. And that works just fine until the voltage on the capacitor drops down to around a volt or so. And at that point, the diode starts to conduct much less current. Uh, the amount of current drops rather sharply. And all of a sudden, the discharge rate for the capacitor, instead of being governed by how big a resistance you've got there, it's governed by the diode. And as a result, you might have an envelope whose release drops from, say, 10 volts down to about a volt in some something like a fraction of a second. And then it might take 10 seconds, 20 seconds, might take even more to drop that last one volt down to zero volts, which is, you know, not a great thing. What do you do about it? Well, one thing you can do about it is you can live with it. You can work around it. Uh, for a lot of purposes, it doesn't really matter if you actually get this envelope right down to zero or not. And so people build envelope generators that behave like this all the time. They use them all the time. And it's good, but it could be better. And for some purposes, you really do want that voltage to come down at least as close as you can get it to zero. So in the Casatronics design, that issue is addressed by replacing the diode with something called a precision rectifier, which really is a diode in the feedback loop of an operational amplifier. And 
without going into all the details about operational amplifiers, we'll just say that there's two things you need to know. One is that you can't put current in or out of either the plus input or the minus input. And the other thing is there's a little demon living inside that wants to make the voltage on the plus and minus inputs the same. Okay. Um, I'm lying about the demon, but it behaves like that. So you set it up for the capacitor to discharge through a resistor and the voltage on the other end of the resistor, which is the minus input on the op amp, has to be zero volts because that's what it is on the plus input. And so there's a voltage drop across the resistor. And so by Ohm's law, there's current flowing through the resistor. That current can't flow into the minus input, so it's got to flow through the diode. In order to flow through the diode, there has to be at least a 700 millivolt voltage drop across the diode. So the little demon inside the op amp sets the output voltage of the op amp to minus 700 millivolts, something like that. And the diode conducts and the capacitor discharges. And this happens regardless of whether the voltage on the capacitor is 10 volts or 2 volts or half a volt or whatever. It just discharges at a rate determined by the resistor, and it does not hang up when it gets down to around 1 volt. And that solves that problem with this envelope generator design. So I found this design. I said, yeah, that's the design I want to build, uh, except that there's a couple of features that I wanted to have which were not present in the Casatronics design. So I went ahead and added those features. Uh, the two features being re-triggering input and uh, looping capability. Re-triggering just refers to the fact that if you've got a gate applied and the envelope is sitting there at its sustained level, you can send in a separate trigger input and that will trigger a new attack and decay on top of that sustain. And you can attack, decay, attack, decay as much as you want to on top of the underlying sustain and then when the gate turns off then it decays down to zero. Why would you want to do that? We'll get to that. The other modification is uh, related to that in that it involves sending triggers to the 555 while the gate is on. But in this case what you're doing is you've got an envelope where the sustain level is zero so it just goes attack and decay to zero, and that's that. But when it gets close to zero, it crosses a threshold, which turns on a comparator, uh, which uh, feeds into a gate to trigger circuit. The outcome of it is when the envelope drops below a threshold, it generates a pulse, which gets sent back into the trigger input on the 555, which starts up a new attack a new decay when it decays down to near zero, another pulse feeds into the 555, you get another attack, another decay, and so you get a repeating series of attack, decay, attack, decay, attack, decay. So I added those modifications, design a circuit board and front panel, and put it together, and here it is. Let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so here's the module connected up. I've got a gate signal going into the gate input here. And if I look at what's coming out the output, it's this. It's your basic attack, decay, sustain, release envelope generator. So when the gate comes on, the attack starts, it comes up to a maximum value decays down to a sustained level, and then when the gate turns off, the envelope releases. And we've got the knobs to control all these things, so we can make the attack faster, we can make the attack slower, here's the decay control, can make it a fast decay, slow decay, we can make the sustain level low, we can make the sustain level zero in fact, make it maximum anywhere in there and you've got the release time here we can make that long we can make that slow or short 
Okay, so it's an ADSR envelope generator. It's also got an inverting output. If you need inverted envelopes for some reason, let's get that trigger down there. You've got uh, inverted and normal outputs. And you can use this to control a voltage controlled amplifier. Turn up that volume a little bit. Or you can use it for something like uh, controlling a voltage controlled oscillator pitch. Or, you know, whatever else you want you use an envelope generator for. All right, now let's take a look at some of the extra features here. So, suppose I connect this up instead of connecting it to that gate there. Let's connect this to my MIDI to CV. And now we get. So, if I hit a key here, uh, we get an envelope several keys. We get several envelopes. Okay, great. If I hold a key down, envelope starts and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Release the key, it drops out. Okay, that's fine. And I can turn up the sound here and we can get... which is fine. But now let's suppose you wanted to play legato, which means that you want instead of having each note separate, distinct into itself, you have one note kind of flowing into another. If you just tried playing, uh, releasing each, or starting each note before you release the previous note, this is what happens. So you see the gate turns on with the first note and it stays on and you don't get any more action happening from the envelope generator until you release the final note. So you don't get attacks on each note. You get the pitch change, but you don't get an attack on each note. So what can you do about that? I mean, if you release, if you release the note before you play the next note, you always have space between the notes. And if you don't release the note before you play the next note, you get no attacks. Okay, that is what we have the retriggering input for. So now what we've set up is we've got a gate going in here. When you press a key down, the gate releases when you release the key, but as long as there's a key down, the gate is on. If you press another key at the same time, then you get a trigger going into the retriggering input, and that gives you another attack and decay on top of the sustain level you've already got from that first gate. So here we'll play a note, and we'll play another note, and another note. So now you see you've got those attacks on top of that sustain level. So you've got this legato thing. If, we, if I turn on the uh, voltage controlled oscillator uh, control, it, it gets a little more obvious what's going on. So I'll play this again. As opposed to if I didn't have that retriggering going on, it would just go. Okay, so that's the retriggering. Now, in addition, we've got this looping feature. If I turn on looping, and I now hold down a note, as long as I'm holding down a note, it keeps sending more and more of these attack and decay envelopes. It, there's no sustain, it drops that down to zero, but it repeats it over and over again. If I release the note, it stops. 
So this is kind of like a sort of a, a low frequency oscillator if you want to think of it that way, but the, it doesn't have really frequency control, it has just control over the attack time and the decay time. But you get this nice sequence of envelopes as long as you're holding the key down. Or if you don't have a gate plugged in, then it just loops forever. And by the way, I didn't point this out before, but let's just take a look at a single envelope here. The thing I talked about in the first place, this release here, it's going right down to zero. It's not hanging up uh, at around one volt or a little below one volt. It's just going right down to zero. It's doing the right thing. So it's all working and it's got these lovely re-triggering and looping features. Okay, so that's my version of the Casutronics Precision ADSR Envelope Generator. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope you'll be around for the next upcoming videos. I've got a few other interesting things to show you. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You'll get a notification when those videos come along. And I'll see you then on Analog Output.